guys are ridiculous. These guys are ridiculous. Now, how about them damn Celtics? And we are back with another episode of How About Them Celtics. Sam and I are here recording on Wednesday, January 10th. Bulk of the episode being recorded, obviously, before the Timberwolves game. You'll have the recap of that game, as has been the case uh, when there's a game day on, on the days before we record. Uh, but we, in this moment, talking to you now, don't know what happened in the Timberwolves game. Us, in about probably two minutes time, we'll know what happened. Um, but you'll, you'll get that when we get there. Uh, before we get there, we have some popcorn to give away. Uh, let's see. Who is taking home some popcorn? I think six entries, seven entries today. Spin the wheel. Decent spin amount. The wheel, spin the wheel. Not a bad Jared wheel. Jared is in on this five. wheel. I saw his comment. <laughs> Jared is in. He said, F it. If he wins, it's going to be fire. One time entrant. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't rig it. I swear to God. We didn't rig you it. You guys see us spin the wheel every time. Like, there, we don't rig it. This is uncut. Right, you would see if we cut the, the video. What, buddy. Get Jared ready to get some popcorn. Shout out, Jared. Pete, once again, one wheel spot away. Pete, you'll win it eventually, we promise. Pete is cursed. <laughs> Pete, you're next Pete's to- one wheel spot is essentially the 76ers. If you're next to Pete on the wheel, you're winning popcorn. Put it that way. Uh, but congrats to Jared. Jared, send us an email at hbtcpod at uh, gmail.com if you'd like a chance to win popcorn in the future comment what's popping on the video or send us an email with what's popping in the subject line uh, and we'll get you on the wheel with a chance to win a gift card for popcorn uh without further ado however like i said two minutes into the video we will know uh who is you know won the celtics timberwolves game so let's jump on over to our future selves to recap that game All right. Thank you to our past selves for throwing it over to us. I almost did a full on intro, but then realized we had recorded an entire pod earlier today. Uh, So it was this. We are here uh, later at night after the Celtics win (laughs) over the Timberwolves, which I have to say. So I was thinking through my head, Sam, in that uh, start of the fourth quarter there. I was like, there's nothing I hate more than talking to Sam after a loss. And thank God. I don't. (laughs) I I hope there are things you hate more, at least a little bit. Uh, it will, I'll put it this way. Let me rephrase. In terms of my job, there are a few things uh, that require as much hatred. Yeah, I think we have uh, fun. I think <laughs> you have fun. <laughs> you have a grand old time. Uh, again, though, luckily did not have to do that. Celtics took home uh, the closest seven point win you'll ever see uh, 127 to 120. Took down the Timberwolves in OT. Both games these two teams have played this season both went to OT. Celtics get the win at home, extend the win streak to 18 and 0. Jason Tatum put up 45. Jalen Brown had 35 and 11. This this game had everything. <laughs> this was absolutely electric. Tatum's best close of the season. Uh, he finished the first half two of uh, seven from the field. He finished 13 of 26 and six of 11 from three with 13 of 14 from the free throw line. He sent Carl Anthony Towns into the shadow realm on a drive to the hoop in a massive three point shot that got the, t- the loudest I've heard TD Garden crowd in the regular season. Uh, sorry, I can't, I'm rambling, but th- this was like the best one of the season by a country mile. Yeah, this game ruled. Well, the finish to this game ruled. The game yeah, itself okay. sucked ass. Uh, for us to all have gotten to this point, we earned it. We earned it. We sat through like, what is it, 42 minutes of slop to get it like a sick close. <laughs> And mm-hmm. You could really be like, you could say 45 minutes of slop. If you're going to rewatch this and you didn't watch it, just watch the last three minutes in overtime. You're going to get everything you needed. Um, this is the most fun I've had watching a regular season game, and <laughs> I couldn't tell you how long at the end. Mm. I felt, this is about me now, I felt like <laughs> I was like back in high school watching Isaiah Thomas play. Like that's that's the field this had, because they they finally did it. They finally successfully eradicated all hope. Made you not expect anything, and then they gave it to you. Then then they showed up big. Then they had big boy ball. Got stops. Made big free throws made big shots, big extra possessions, good extra passes. There are examples of all of the good things that they did 
and they did them all and it helped them get themselves to overtime. And then overtime, they did a great job of uh, buckling down, finally getting some stops again after it felt like they weren't mm. going to get stops and closing the game out. Big time credit to Tatum tonight. He was excellent. He was very locked in, driven, focused. He took 11 threes of his 26 shots. If you do the percentages of what the normal ratio is, it feels like that's less low key. You know what I mean? Like it feels like there are a lot of nights where he takes like over 50% of his shots from deep, he, but he, he made some massive the hoop tonight. He made massive drives and he did it mm-hmm. instead of settling. Even the miss at the end of regulation, you can say what you want. I thought it was fine. I didn't like that the ball didn't move, but in terms of looks from Tatum, pretty good shot. I mean, mid range open going to his left, the pull up is got a lot of space for him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was kind of surprising then. it didn't go in on the TV. It looked like it was going to go in. Yeah, I was I, I mean, very, very floored with what we saw from <laughs> these guys down the stretch. It, the free throw making, what they missed one, <laughs> and it was low thirty key, of like, thirty one. Well, yeah. what what happened is John Corrales before the game asked Joe, he goes, Joe, you guys have been missing a lot of free throws lately. Like, do you say something? What do you do? And Joe goes, I don't coach free throws. They're free throws. Like these guys practice. Like, what, what am I going to tell them how to make a free throw? They don't want to make a free throw. They just have to make the free throws. <laughs> Effectively what Joe said. And after the game, uh, he he was like, well, yeah, thanks to Corrales. I talked to them in the locker room and apparently something <laughs> Uh, and then, I mean, I'm getting off track for a sec. Bobby goes to ask questions. George goes, "Are you wearing a tie?" <laughs> Bobby goes, "Yeah." Which, which Bobby? He goes, "Our Bobby, Bobby or Manning. Bobby Manning? Manning, Manning, Manning. Our Bobby." Um, he goes, "Yeah, you're wearing a tie." And he goes, "I was surprised based on what other people are wearing." He just looks right at me. I'm like, "What the fuck, man? <laughs> let, me, let me live." Joe. Was Jay King there? <laughs> but he was right next to me. But I made eye contact. It was rough. Uh, anyways, back to the game. Tatum phenomenal you looked puzzled when i said sent carol anthony townsend to his shadow realm do you are you not remembering the play that i mentioned or, or well, i, I didn't i said? thought you were like talking like he dropped it <laughs> no, well not not actually not like physically but like mine as well carl anthony Towns was lost <laughs> like he was cross-legged like stumbling back trying to guard tatum tatum was awesome that's the point one phenomenal close for tatum did everything you needed to do in the final moments. Best part is text I get from Danny and Mike, two of my friends in a chat. <clears throat> they like to give me shit. Danny texts me. Let's see. Oh, shit. I opened the wrong group chat. It was Jason Tatum, not clutch. <laughs> not a very clutch Tatum shot after the mid-range midi. And I just goes, guys, he's the only reason they are in overtime right now. <laughs> he was huge. Yeah. And they just go, and then they just go miss two shots in a free throw. And I'm like, guys, <laughs> what are we doing? Well, the miss free throw <laughs> calculated yeah, well, it's true and then danny goes uh any open three is not my definition of a killer instinct <laughs> and i'm like after the one in overtime I'm like guys <laughs> what do we do anyways the point is tatum good just going down the line here jalen brown fucking locked up anthony edwards after the game he's asked about it, he just goes yeah i mean all respect to ant because they're for both from atlanta he's like it's great but i was just like yeah sorry not tonight brother <laughs> he he shot 05 in the last x amount of minutes like when he was guarding uh guarded by jalen just locked him up tatum spent a possession on him locking him up these guys completely shut down one of the best players in the league for the last five minutes of the game they said nah <laughs> you know what sam tweeted that we needed to get stops or he's pull- pulling out bernie sanders well let's go get some stops and that's exactly what they did um he was great. Drew Holiday, some clutch stops down the stretch, including a huge one in OT. Derek White and him both had really, really rough nights, uh, but both made huge plays in the final moments of the game. I mean, it was this game had everything, like you said, and shout out every single person on the team made a clutch play in a big moment down the stretch. And, and it was the perfect example of how good this team can be when they're all playing their roles effectively. Yeah, I, I was super impressed with the way that they responded when it looked like the game was over. To your point about texting Danny and giving Tatum credit for the game being in overtime, he willed them over the finish line today. It was crazy. Like, Despite this team being full of stars, he managed to step up, take control of the game, do it in a way that it didn't feel forced. Hmm. And and he got them. He got them there. It was something else. 
The ball movement was great. The most impressive play of the game to me. After he missed the free throw, the Derek White rebound, of course. Then Tatum intercepts a pass to Brown. I don't know if you noticed that when you were there. But Derek White, like, so. just he, he go, crashes, gets the rebound off the free throw, and he just goes to kick it to the top of the key where Jalen is. Pick. Tatum pick. Uh, <laughs> but it, here's where it's awesome. Instead of doing what we've seen a lot of times this year, Tatum does attack the defense. However, he concedes that, hey, somebody else is open because I'm seeing three guys. Swings the ball to Horford, who swings it to Holiday, and Holiday sticks the corner three to light the place on fire. <laughs> I'm so impressed that they made the decision to move it and just play as a team in that situation, despite Tatum being uh, on a heater, doing the carry job. Jalen, same thing. Jalen, great game from him, too. The turnovers weren't even there tonight. You can't nitpick that. They still turn to the teammates. Great job. <laughs> like, this is the kind of thing I've been complaining about. I feel like a month ago, we might not see a swing there. We might see... I've scored X amount of straight points, me time. Buddy. We didn't. Uh, literally against the same team, we didn't. <laughs> it happened a month ago, two months ago when they played this team. This, <clears throat> I, 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 we should talk about the negatives too, because like we mentioned, this was a really we'll rough there. game. We'll, we'll for get like there. 40 we'll minutes. Circle jerk okay, for okay. a little bit more. But, <clears throat> okay, okay. <laughs> this game, like, that was, like, so I, I got the chance to sit downstairs today rather than up on the ninth floor so i was i was down in the lower bowl which i think i might get the chance to do more often now which is pretty cool so thanks to the celtics but um celtics blog has set a spot there for a little bit apparently um that was genuinely the loudest i've ever heard when tatum hit that three to put them up five after the big drew stop and the transition and kicking it out and getting it to him finding him that was the loudest i've heard this building outside of the playoffs and it's up there against some of the playoff games too like like this like tatum and the run they went on and Jalen Brown locking up Anthony Edwards and Drew getting the big stops and Al and D white, like they got this place pumped up and a point I saw on Twitter, which <clears throat> apologies if I, I forget who tweeted it. It might've been a reporter. It might've been just somebody I follow on Twitter made a point of, they struggled to find, to get in the paint early in the game, like in the first half, like they just couldn't find anything inside. And you really felt the missing piece of Porzingis who was kind of their, their easy like let's get inside let's move it from the interior because he's fucking seven three and you can get it to him and then in the second half tatum was just like f that i'm just gonna run past everybody and he did uh he he was incredible he showed why he damn well might be the best player in the nba certainly up there scored with the best of them uh played elite defense on ant we've seen him i mean i know they lost the thunder game but played great defense on shade down the stretch did it against ant uh in this one did it against jaw last year like we're seeing him take on high top tier matchups at the end of games slowing guys down and helping the celtics uh compete if not win uh in games where they probably shouldn't have um based on the rest of the game that was huge jalen's defense was amazing he didn't really have it in terms of uh offense in the second half as much uh, but it didn't matter because he <laughs> was making a huge impact on defense and on the glass 11 rebounds including a clutch one at the end those two combined for 80 points they had 80 points 80 <laughs> that's that's ridiculous it's the first time they've ever combined for 80 points i don't know how many teammates in nba history have combined for 80 points but i can't imagine the losing record um uh, or excuse me, the record is is very bad. I, I can imagine it's pretty good. And the fact that they were able to overcome a otherwise pretty rough night um, where they didn't play at the level that they should have been playing at, they you know didn't hit the rotations, gave up some open threes for the Timberwolves, <clears throat> um, couldn't hit their shots uh, inside the three-point arc for once. They were struggling inside, missed some layups, uh, missed some middies. Tatum's midi wasn't really on for a lot of the night. Um, they pulled it back. Uh, in a big way at the end behind Tatum and Brown, who damn well me might be the best <laughs> duo in the NBA. Like when they're on, it is so tough to stop both of them. It's damn near impossible. And so like those two were, this is their, like the best one of the season. I'm rambling now, but like, I'm truly like, I'm, I want, I was so ready to come here and give takeaways like 
rotations were bad. All this stuff happened and they lost the game. Like, this is why it was a tough one. Credit the Timberwolves are playing really good, all that stuff. And then the Jays decided, nah, we're just going to win anyway. <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> it was, it was, uh, that was the next level. Like I said, it was the best one of the season. Like it was, is I'm just in sure. awe that they won that game in awe They won that game. The NFL season is wrapping up and there's still time to get in on the action with FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get 150 in bonus bets guaranteed when you place a $5 bet. That's 150 bucks in bonus bets, win or lose. And the app is so easy to use. And there are so many different ways to bet like live, same game parlays. Find bets in the new Explore tab. Make a parlay in the Parlay Hub, the best way to find popular parlays, and more. So visit fanduel.com slash Boston and make your first bet a layup. FanDuel, official partner of the NFL. Yeah, I thought they were dead. They went down, what, nine with three <laughs> minutes left after they couldn't stop Kyle Anderson or Nikhil Alexander-Walker for the whole fourth quarter? That I will was say, unbelievable. I, I know. I agree with you. I will say... So then some of the Nikhil ones were rough. Anderson was just making obscene shots at the rim. Like I, I was right there. No, they Those were stop. all contested he, shots. He was getting to the rim every time and he was doing what he does, slowing down and letting the defense overplay themselves. And he was just getting the ball up over the rim. Sure. I know. But what I'm saying is like they contested those shots at the rim very well uh, for the most part. My real problem defensively for the Celtics was they gave up an obscene amount of open threes to this Timberwolves team. Nas they Reed sure was did. living behind the line. Jaden McDaniels was hitting some big shots. Anthony Edwards hit some tough ones, but he hit some easy ones too. Like, you just can't do that. They broke out a zone for a single play at the end of the first half, got cooked, torched. Jordan, uh, uh, Jalen McDaniels, Jordan McLaughlin, I'm getting confused, hit a three, and like they just didn't go to it the rest of the game. Like, they couldn't find an answer. They did an okay job of slowing down Cat in the first half, and then he figured something out and just bullied his way to the hoop. He had a pretty good game. Anthony Edwards was cooking him for most of the content. Like they, the, it's it's incredible how they locked in um, at the end of that game to slow down the Timberwolves because they had no answers for most of the game. There, I will say, not that like I still credit still credit the Celtics for playing well. Some really bad possessions by Carl Anthony Towns at the end of overtime. <laughs> like just some what are you doing shots from him chucking up middies and, and taking early threes. Um, that was odd. It was weird that they overcommitted to Edwards, especially mm. when he wasn't really playing that well down the stretch. They were throwing two guys at him in overtime in mm. that little hot streak that the Timberwolves went on, making like three after three after three in OT was just off of double teams. Like he was he was passing the ball out of doubles. He's I, not an I idiot. Mean, He's not gonna sit there and let you like swarm them. I know there are players that do that. Like that's a real strategy. Sometimes you have to pressure people. We talked about Julius it before the Pacers matchup. They did it Tyrese, the Lakers did, and he mm. melted in the in season tournament final. Or not melted, but he wasn't able to be as involved. Of mm -hmm. course, like I get it. But like I don't know. When your whole hole in the defense in the fourth quarter was guys that weren't Anthony Edwards, maybe just guard your yard. Maybe. I mean, it worked. They made other guys kill him, and Jade McDaniels airballed a three. <laughs> so it worked to some extent. Watching, watching those threes go up in overtime, it was like mm. my heart was about to stop every time they went, heart went through the air. Yeah. Yeah. Scary. There but was a Towns one that he in. missed that I can't believe didn't drop. <clears throat> mm, yes, I know exactly what you're talking about. I will say, though, and I, I think I think he tweeted something like this, like, for every shot the Timberwolves made in OT, the Celtics made it one, too. They were like, nah, no, we're no, not no, letting it was, you get ahead. What I tweeted was the opposite. The Celtics oh. were brain damaged trying to put the ball in the basket <laughs> for three quarters of this game. And then Sam Hauser came alive for the first time in three months. Not really. More like a week No, no, no. I, I'm talking about OT specifically. Like, the the the... Timberwolves were hot at the start of OT, but the Celtics were matching them, and then the Celtics locked in and kept hitting shots. I, the rest of the game, Celtics couldn't play offense. <laughs> like They didn't know how to play offense. You're correct. <laughs> they were yeah. lost for the most part. That's my team. Um, I was, okay, okay. I was just talking about OT. I must have misread it, but 18-0, TD Garden, Sam. This is this is your dream. This is has to be up there, right? This is... <laughs> this I is thought like, it was dead. <laughs> I, I was so mad when I was like, they're really going to lose this way. There's nothing I mm. hate more than losing to the other guys. 
I hate when they lose winnable games. Like I, I hate a lot of things about what were was going wrong in this game. <laughs> And I was like, yeah. this is just the biggest like slap in the face, like gonna piss me off loss. When it went to overtime, I almost like lost it. I was not <laughs> happy that I had to watch an overtime. I, mm. I'm over overtime. How many overtimes have we seen now? Six? Only four. I think this was their fourth, yeah. It's only four? I think so. It's only been two at T D Garden. I looked this up they in lost the game. To Minnesota, um, Charlotte, they lost Golden State. Golden Detroit, State. sorry, five, five, five. This was the five. Yeah. They've won two in a row. They're back. <clears throat> yes. Which after is good. Being 0 3 in overtime. Yes. Yeah. They, they started 0 3. <laughs> I thought they were dead in overtime. Like, I'm not going to lie to you. When this went to overtime, I thought they were just going to lose. They didn't. They stepped up. They won the game. They executed. Now, uh, aside from the Kyle Anderson, Nikhil Alexander Walker complaints. Not yeah. sure this was a day I needed to see 10 Drew Holiday threes. They weren't dropping. Uh, yeah, some, some of them. And a lot of them were. The, it's like he got Tatumitis. Like he, he yeah, I was I was ready to come back and be like, well, there were good threes. And I was like, mm, they kind of were weren't. some oh, good some ones. <laughs> like the yeah. one that he made. Also, <laughs> sorry, not non, non Celtics for just half a second here. Uh, after beating the Bucks and the Sixers, the Jazz are up by 20 on the Nuggets. <laughs> Yeah, I'm. I got all the scores up on on What's NBA.com. Happening? I don't what know what doing? the hell's going on with the Jazz, and all of a sudden they're nasty. Like they're just Sorry, we don't have, everybody. Yeah, we don't have to talk about the Jazz. I just saw that and was like, "What the hell is happening?" Sixers <laughs> God, lost, Utah. by the way. Yeah, Celtics. Oh, this is what I was gonna say. Celtics now have a three-game buffer over everybody else in the NBA and a four-game buffer over the second seed in the East. It's yeah. pretty good. They're it's, bad. Uh, it's, Pretty good. Uh, also avoided their second uh, two-game losing streak of the season. They have only lost two games in a row once. There was, was a point tonight that I was like, wow, winning. they're going to lose three in a row. Like, this is going to be a three-game losing streak. I was like, no way they win tomorrow with the way we're now, seeing them play right now. I want to go back to Drew Holiday quick. Mm. He only made yeah. two threes today. Both of them were massive. There was one <laughs> yes. he made, I think it was the third quarter or the end of the first half. When the Celtics hadn't made a basket in like five minutes. Mm. And then there was obviously the one that put them up in crunch time. Yeah. Big moment player, yeah. Drew Holiday. Just e even if it's not like technically crunch time, he's there. He's making the shots. Now, again, there were a lot of super cool step backs, but he, he did make the big <sighs> one. So credit to him. Yeah. Don't need to see 10 of them. <laughs> Maybe not. Maybe I'm not. happy he he's aggressive be, uh... at the same time. <laughs> yes. Yes, I agree. Probably shouldn't be taking close to the same amount as Tatum, though. Probably not great. Yes. Uh, 31 I, I like free aggression. throws. Speaking Just, of aggression, 31 free throws. Yeah. Big Going time. to the basket. Yes. Please. Please Big go time. to the basket. Also, 31 free throws, Sam. Of those 31, 27 came from the Jays. Who took the I other four? They shot 34. Don't, don't look. Don't look. They shot no. They shot thirty one. Did you see who shot the other four? Though I'm quizzing you. Who shot the other four? Cornet had mm -hmm. two. Cornet had two, and uh, the other two were. Don't tell me because I'm trying to. <laughs> Cornet was the like one I was hoping you wouldn't get. <laughs> mm. Yes, 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 yes. I don't know. It uh, it was Derek White. Derek White had two free throws as well. Oh, okay. Uh, but I, I mean, the, the whole joke was I hoping you wouldn't get Cornette because it was funny, but then you got Cornette first, and so my joke was remember because it was like a weird he should have had an and one, and then they called it back, and it yeah, was on the floor, so he had to yeah, re yeah, yeah. the two points they had already given him. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, I mean, good win. Last thing I will mention weird, weird defensive decisions in the first half. Uh, it was unique, I, it kind of worked at times and kind of didn't like. Cornette was guarding Troy Brown on the perimeter. Tatum was guarding Cat. Derek White was guarding Nas or um, yeah, Nas Reed for a little bit. Just very odd. It worked for stretches, and then it didn't, and then it did. And so it, they're very comfortable trying a bunch of random shit, uh, which works sometimes. But this was this was the Jason Tatum is better than your favorite player game. Uh, if I've ever seen it, he he got this crowd juiced. This, Eighteen and this, this home. This is the first nice. time. In a while where I've like felt supremely confident in Tatum. 
as in tonight or as in this last few games? Because he's been really good, like the last few games he's played in. Tonight more so than the others. Like, okay, I felt like I was like I could trust this man with my life. Today. <laughs> that crossover drive he had against Carl Anthony Towns was the nastiest thing I've seen in real life ever on a basketball. Pull court. it up, genuinely. All right, all right, all right. Is it the Let's one see. right before? <laughs> is it the overtime one? Uh, yeah. It was Pull the drive. The whole sequence. The That's the best sequence of the year. Pull it up. Forsberg right, had it. The NBA had it. I think All so. It was place. just, uh, yeah. Okay. Let's see. Driving layup and then running jump. Yeah. It was the last two shots of his in the game. So we're just going to watch those two shots. Uh, Sound on. Off. Or wait, it, like you want me to go on Twitter and find it? I'm on NBA.com. <clears throat> Twitter's better. Right. It's just all one place. Yes. You're right. You're right. You said Forsberg Sound had it. On. Must sound. Going to Forsberg on the laptops and internet not moving quite as quick. So apologies. I've been there. I've been there. For okay, Forsberg tweeted a lot of videos. <laughs> uh, uh the NBA had it. I'll I Okay, sorry, it. sorry. I I'm yeah. I'm trying to Yeah, send it to me. Sorry, chat. You'll you'll bear with us here. Um <laughs> I'm not at my home station, so finding stuff is not as easy uh on the laptop. Apologies. Uh, oh, is this it? This is probably it. Tatum took over down the stretch, 45 points. This is, uh, this is the video we're looking for. Hold on. <clears throat> I, I just sent it. it to you. All right. Twitter DM? Yep. Fire. Thank you. Uh, stop sharing. All right. Let's go to here. Thank you very much. All right. Send Share a video. screen. Sorry, chat. Thanks for bearing with us. Hopefully, this doesn't get us copyright striked. It's Let's worth it. do this. Nice buffer. All right. If it plays. If it plays. Twitter's it weird plays. with videos. TD Garden Wi-Fi, baby. Should I pull it? All right. Chad, I promise you it'll work eventually. Or maybe I'm lying to you. I could be lying to your face. Yeah, I don't know if this is going to work. I'll pull <laughs> it is, You could try. You've been lagging a little bit too, though, so we might be cooked. I, I lag. Like, I'm either all the way lagging or I'm not lagging. Oh, I'm also. Right, well, we'll hope so. Yeah, this is. Yeah, I, I, maybe this isn't working. Maybe this is. Here, let me let me go to the NBA one. This is our last chance. Then we'll leave you, chat. Sorry for this. I mean, I will say if you're still listening to us and you've listened to us for a while and you didn't expect this to be scuffed, that's your own fault at this point. Um, <laughs> it's kind of true. All right. <laughs> all right, let's try this one. This is NBA. It's it's Tatum took over down the stretch. I'm hoping this is it. So let's watch it with sound. It's longer than Forsberg, so we can skip ahead if it's not it. But. Say second quarter. Ahead, All right, we'll start from here, I think. They could OT highlights. The foul out Jane McDaniels. This one. Basket. Nasty. It was so much better. Like uh, this, this was the nastiest thing I've ever seen. He did the old Maybe it didn't come across on TV, dude. It's, it's cool. He's he's John Collins out there. He's lost. It didn't look that crazy. Like it looked more like a physical drive to me when it happened. It was nuts. I actually thought he got nuts. fouled on the half spin. This is the best best play of the season. De I love a defensive to offense play. That pop right there, one of the loudest things I've ever heard of you. You know what's the best about all of this is how happy Al Horford was. There was like a, a shot of him at the end of the game, like just clapping, and he was so proud. Mm -hmm. He was proud. Well, Jalen was asked about it. He was like really happy for Jalen on a rebound. And, and Jalen just goes, yeah, because he's usually the one grabbing those, man. Like I'm trying my best. Also fun tidbit, Jason Tatum. Uh, Abby Chin asked him, said, like, are you excited? You get to try to get the win for Drew tomorrow in Milwaukee. He goes, yeah, it's going to be another fun one. I saw somewhere that we've got the easiest strength the schedule left. When the, you know, when's that shit going to start? <laughs> we got Minnesota, Milwaukee back to back, <laughs> which That's is true, just dude. hilarious. Um, but after that, <clears throat> I will say they've got those two. Then they got Houston, Toronto, San Antonio, Denver, Houston. Da Actually, maybe not. What the fuck is happening? It really doesn't start to the end of the year, I guess. They've got uh yeah, okay. Their March is uh I don't want to say Mickey Mouse, but Mickey Mouse March. <laughs> I mean Atlanta, Chicago, Detroit, 
Milwaukee, Detroit, Chicago, Atlanta, Atlanta, New Orleans, Charlotte. So call it what you will. But anyways, great game tonight. Any final thoughts before you throw it back over to the rest of the show? They better win tomorrow. Enjoy it tonight. Yes, tomorrow sure. we're back. Back on the grind. <laughs> Hell yeah. All right. Thank y'all. I'm about to do an outro again. I'm just throw it back to the rest of the show, please. Jesus. Oh, I was about to do the outro too. <laughs> yeah, called right. retired. All right. Thank you to our past selves for throwing it over to us. We spend about four seconds uh, real time between the past and the future here. But a uh, lot goes on <laughs> in between uh, in terms of the recap that we don't know about yet. So hopefully it was a good one. Uh, let us know what you think of the comments of that crazy Timberwolves Celtics game that happened that I definitely know what happened. In. Uh, but next thing we got, Jason Tatum uh, is going to be in a Netflix documentary. Sham Sharania reported. Uh, that the the Netflix is producing a documentary similar to the one they made for the NFL called Quarterback, where they follow around star players. It will feature Celtic star Jason Tatum, as well as LeBron James, Jimmy Butler, Anthony Edwards, and DeMontis Sabonis, uh, effectively just kind of following them around, documenting their life behind the scenes. I'm excited. I, I always enjoy that kind of stuff. I think it's the reason, that's the reason I like all the player podcasts, as in JJ Redick, Iguodala, and Evan Turner, like all those guys. Like, I think those are the most interesting podcasts to me because it gives you an insight that you don't always get. Uh, as somebody who covers a team or as a fan or something like that, you they get to see behind the curtain a little bit. And so I'm excited to see that from a perspective of Jason Tatum in this doc. I, I think it'll be really cool. I now we don't know the answer to this, so we don't, but I do wonder if they already started filming. I would assume because that would explain Tatum playing like ass for a month and a half when he had the shoes coming out last year, fell off a cliff this year in a documentary, thrown off his routine, whatever. It's good to have him back regardless. Uh, I hope it comes out in the summer, which I said to Jack already, because that would give us content to talk about on the podcast at least content. one time. One <laughs> single time to have something to talk about in August would be a miracle. Hmm. Yes, uh, an addendum to James's tweet. It's nothing like those are the players that are in it. Uh, James's LeBron James's Spring Hill Company, Barack Obama's Higher Ground Productions, and Peyton Manning's Omaha Productions have teamed up to produce the series. So <laughs> it's just like the craziest mix of like legends you could ever have <laughs> producing right. a documentary. Like this is it's gonna be very high quality. I'm very excited. Uh, kind of weird that Sabonis out. is in it. It is. I, I do. Maybe they wanted somebody it. that had like a European. That's what I was like, going to say. I, the league. I wonder if Jokic they asked, said no. I wonder if they asked Luka Jokic. He said, no. said no. I bet Lucas said no. I guess like, he's the next up. Uh, you know who they should have had instead of him? Wemby. Why didn't they ask Wemby? Maybe he said no. Maybe uh, Wemby would have no. been clear choice. Um, Sabonis said yes, though. So, you know what? As random as it is, I am now intrigued to see what Sabonis is like behind the scenes. Because he's, you just don't know. Because it's like the it's the random. LeBron stuff is going to be insufferable. I'll tell you that. Because <laughs> not only is like he in it, and obviously like it's always going to be like, look at how great LeBron is. But now he's in charge of it too. Mm. Big time circle jerk incoming. He's he going to be the greatest uh... dad ever. Every day I wake up and play with my kids. You know, the whole nine, someone's going to get mad at that. Oh, of course he plays with his kids. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> I was going to say, like, <laughs> of all the things to pick on LeBron about, I wouldn't say being a good father is the top I'm, oh, the I'm not saying it's a it's not a bad <laughs> thing to be a good father, but they're going to make sure they're like, look, and they're the same thing, same thing with Tatum. But they're going to be like, look, this is the greatest guy ever. Guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you could have picked a lot of things <laughs> to, to diss LeBron in that moment. And <laughs> I'm not dissing him. I'm just going to say that is going to be a feature of the, the <laughs> thing. They're going to be like, look how great of a father he is. Well, I of course it is, because it's a good thing. And that's what documentaries tend to highlight. <laughs> well, he's supposed to be behind the scenes, what it's like. Yeah, he's probably a good one. I wonder father if they're going to have the, the uh, no, what is it, non disclosure? What are NDAs? Yeah, I wonder if they're going to feature that. Anyways, uh, next thing we got, Derek White is cursed. Uh, joined the J.J. Reddick pod, which we were just talking about. J.J. Reddick made it clear, abundantly clear, that he was not going to bring in a three-point shooting. <laughs> and then Tommy Alter decided to say, hey, Derek White, you're shooting pretty well from three this year. <laughs> you're playing pretty good. Wait, 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 wait. J.J. immediately yelled at him. Since uh, appearing on the podcast, three-point splits are down. 
shooting splits are down in general. 32, 29 splits since the podcast. Free throws, Everyone. automatic. Free throws are in, unlike the rest of the team. But he just, it just seems like everything's short for him. Like, it just seems like he's just a little bit off. Uh, it's definitely just a slump. It's just a joke we're making about the podcast. But it is damning that immediately after he goes on the JJ Redding pod, he immediately goes into a slump. It is kind of hilarious. You got to ask him. Especially if it was a good game tonight, be like, <laughs> what did it take to get you out of the J.J. Reddick slump? I will. If he has a good game tonight, I will ask him. Okay. Thank you. Mm. This will be remembered. It's it's on film. <laughs> if you get to remind me to, I have a tiny, uh, <laughs> tiny memory, but. <laughs> I will. We'll if, to... he, if he plays well, I'll probably think of it. <clears throat> yeah. I don't I'm know. i start I... texting you questions for everybody. No. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> uh... I hope he breaks out of it soon. He's still impacting winning. Like he's still playing solid defense. He's still making the right Great. play, but the shot's just not there, which is and tough. to his credit, like you don't feel him being bad. Yes. You're just like, wow, like those shots aren't going in that we thought were going in every single time. It's not like, oh, they just wasted that whole possession because Derek White decided it was Derek White time. Like, no, he's still like doing everything in the flow of the offense. He hasn't changed his play style, which is the most important thing. You don't want to see him start bending and moving around and losing confidence and all that stuff. He still looks just as sharp. He was ready in the Pacers game. I think he made like a big shot or two. At least when mm. they were reeling. I don't remember. Maybe it was the first one. He He's made a couple all of the way around a zillion shots. times. That's for that sure. That was very funny. <laughs> well, that just shows you how hard it was for them to make free throws in Indiana. That that was the one like that's what it took for it to go in. It did it, everything it could not to go in. That was the weirdest thing, the Celtics not being able to hit free throws in Indiana, because it was random, because they've been so good, at, like, for the most part, at free throws. Another ask year. them thing. Like, <laughs> if, if they shoot well at home today, be like, why do you, like, you guys played two games in Indiana and the free throws were not falling. And it felt like the Pacers missed a fair amount, too. I it's wonder if it's weird. something about the arena. Very odd. Unsure. But hopefully Derek White turns it around soon. If he turns it around in the Timberwolves game, y'all will know already, and we don't. But anyways, let's jump over to the email, see what you guys have to say. Uh, let me switch. Pull it up. Share the screen right here. Email. I'll pull up the thing. All right. First one. RJ from a couple days ago. What's popping? Those are the kinds of losses that suck. This is after Pacers lost. Evening, guys. Meh. What's the coach's old saying? Never put yourself in a position where the refs can decide the game. Yeah, those late calls were ass. The Brown overturn, I can't figure out because where the incon- inconvertible proof uh, was the Matherin foul because that wasn't a foul. My other one gripe is wondering how in a game where we don't have Tatum Porzingis, uh, Porzingis had most uh, the most fourth. Sorry, uh, the fourth most shot attempts. I read it as fourth quarter. Uh, the impact in terms of getting easier points, getting to the free throw line and slowing the Pacers down all would have made a difference. It's sort of the offense uh, that will make a difference in the playoffs. Another thing the Celtics have to put some reps in is their free throws. Sub 70 percent is a good way to punt a winnable game because uh, even if it was ugly, the Celtics still almost pulled their chestnuts out of the fire. Uh, and probably if I go watch the footage of the game, I'll see some things that negate my complaints above. I'll feel better in a bit, but this kind of loss sucks. Be well, I thought it was valid. <clears throat> it was a tough one. A tough I, one. I was shocked by the Porzingis like lack of shots. Not when I was watching the game, but when I looked at the box store, I was like, wow, I thought he took more shots than that. He was mm-hmm. pretty good. Like He did a good job, especially late in the game. He drilled the big three to tie it. And that's been a Porzingis trait all year is he's clutch 12 of 18 now in crunch time when games are within the final five minutes with a score separated by five points or less. Throwing the ball. He needs to be a staple of the late game offense, even when they signed him or signed him, traded for him this summer. That was one of the things that we discussed. I wrote about it for Celtics blog is ability to post up and slow things down is a great weapon to use late in games. I don't think they did not use it in this game because he did have the opportunity off a of, off a of catch and shoot for three. But I would have liked mm-hmm. to see maybe something for Porzingis run instead of Jalen going to three guys. Maybe next time the game is on the line, maybe Porzingis time. Mm. Sound might sound dumb with shot creators like Tatum and Brown, but we haven't seen them try it yet. And it would just be an interesting, like, let's see if this works. Thing. I think they've gone to him at the end of games before. There was um what the game was game. it? They, he cooked. No, no there was he, another he one. Carried them through the end of that one, though. Even if it's there not was, the one you think of, he was excellent. There was another game. It was the same game where Tatum found Derek White in the in the corner for a three. I forget what it was. I'll okay, find it eventually. Three? No, no, it was. I think they won it. I'll find it eventually. Um, Derek but I went for a three. 
they have gone to Christoph Porzingis in the fourth quarter before late in a post up situation. I remember it. I just can't. I'm not saying like in the fourth quarter. I mean like literally with like the final shot. Okay, sure. Yeah, I, I just remember it was one of the final shots. It might have been the Raptors game. I can't remember. Anyways, uh, next email we got is from Ian. How about them Patriots? This was an excellent email. I did skim this at work. So excellent not work, ready Ian, yet. before we even start. <laughs> Howdy, y'all. What's popping? Listen to the Monday Pacers pod uh, on the way to work today and found, ironically enough, a few points related to football crowd, even before the Patriots fans draft, which was a point I have never even considered, but it's so true. Boston football only fans are the worst. I believe that Pacers game suffered from a mental letdown that happens when top players go out. Like in football, you plan for their top running back, uh, who is a downhill smash mouth runner. Uh, but when he goes out with a foot injury in the first half, the very capable backup comes in and lights it up because a, the intensity was dropped up uh, an effort because, Oh, Barry Sanders uh, isn't here. We're fine. And B the play style of the opponent is different. Now the game plan and attention to details get thrown out the window, be it intentional or not. This is not an excuse after, uh, but rather a case study and something I hope Joe and the team leaders can recognize and not let happen again. Cough, cough, Atlanta series. Secondly, my buddy sent me a message yesterday because because he finally checked in on the Celtics after the Patriots season is over. Celtics, quote, Celtics are looking good, but how many times are we going to play the Pacers? <clears throat> I am preparing for the eventual onslaught of half-baked Celtics take coming in, which will tie into my Patriots fan scapegoat draft. One, <clears throat> the refs. We may be able to separate inadequate play on the court from poor officiating, but like a young JT or current Braun, any missed call that, quote, costs us a game will be blasted on repeat to fuel their hate. No analysis of the game, just, quote, refs rigged against us. Saw it a lot the other day, <laughs> last couple days. True. Two, Cornette. But not just because of all the Cornettes laying around, but coupled with the Nimis Keita highlights, uh, they can find, quote, it's Rob Light, B- bench Cornette, he stinks. Play this Kuwait kid. <laughs> Plus, I can't wait to hear them try to say his name after not being around at all. At all. Three, Holiday slash Smart. You'll have the wildest takes about giving up Smart. They could use him. I always loved him. I can't believe they traded him while simultaneously hating everything Smart did. They will see Holiday as, quote, just not smart, but doing similar things, coupled with last uh, years of, quote, Smart is just better than Holiday. That was sent around because we bleed green and our guy is always better. Last Patriots fan point. They will not understand CBA, TPE, tax aprons, or how NBA team building uh, will go. But I send my sympathies to you and other Boston media that will have to deal with more and more irresponsible trade and buyout recommendations as the trade season continues on. Brace yourself. Winter is coming. Ian Sods. Shout out, Ian. Good email. Fire email from Ian. (laughs) So I'll say this about the CBAs. Well, I feel like the CBA stuff and then the rest of that should be separated. Like Mm. CBA is kind of complicated. Salary matching should not be that complicated. It should be like, hey, this guy can make this much money. Well, and they need to match it. The confusing part gets where certain teams can match up to 125%. Certain teams can only match up to 100%. Second apron teams can't go over. Like, they have to match exactly. Second apron teams can't send out more than they're getting in, uh, no matter what, which is different for some teams. So it does get confusing. I will say, for fans who are Patriots fans trying to do trades. They literally have these things called trade machines where you can put it in and it will tell you if it's allowed. (laughs) So I recommend using the machine that tells you whether or not you can make a trade. Uh, So that's my recommendation. We'll see if the the Pats fans use that. Next thing. What's popping? Nathan Burns. Oh, that's some personal information. I'll cut that out. Oops. (laughs) Proof we don't read the emails. (laughs) That was just Nathan Burns. Wait, wait, um, wait, wait, wait. uh, now we have quickly turned um, around to a trade idea. Our, I will our, say our emails have been properly stacked. I think Nathan. Yeah. You just said, love the pod. Sent us what's popping email. Listen to you fellas talking about last night's game. Uh, as we speak, keep up the good work. We appreciate you. I just want to show the appreciation, but I will cut out the uh, information. Um, <clears throat> Next email from Inferno Dragon. Hey, guys, it's been a minute since that one email I sent a while ago, but I haven't had anything meaningful to say until now. I got the trade idea, uh, a trade idea that involves PP, Sfi, and Banton for McConnell through a second rounder in whichever direction you want. Probably not more than one, though. That feels to me like it would benefit both sides. Inzi gets an upside guy with a solid floor right now, and PP, who's not terribly expensive for their future, fits in pretty well with how they want to play, plus salary filler and maybe a second rounder. So let's get a win now guy and TJ that control the pace of game off the bench in a way that Pritchard can't. Uh, either can't or doesn't for whatever reason, along with hustle plays, rebounding and defense that TJ is known for. I know Pritchard does these things too, but McConnell does them at a higher level from what the eye test tells me. Pritchard is the eighth man in a playoff rotation right now. And if a guy like TJ, uh, uh, if it's a guy like TJ or PPA, it feels so much better when the ball is in the hands, uh, 
of TJ than I do with Pritchard. Pritchard needs threes to go in. McConnell can get to his spots at will. I'd much rather have the ladder in a playoff setting just because there's less variance in that style of play. I know Pritchard is younger on a fairly good long-term contract, but I truly believe 7.5 is too much uh, for this team in the future when you consider all the other big contracts they have coming up. I also think it's not that hard to find viable guards on the minimum deals. Campaign, Jordan Goodwin, when this team does need cheap players. Um, one makes sense after the Pacers game that this is a suggestion. <laughs> sure. Uh, two, the Pacers have reportedly declined all trade calls for TJ McConnell. So that's context to consider the situation. And three, you can't really play TJ McConnell in the Celtic system in the playoffs because he doesn't shoot threes and guys will just leave him open because he does not like he when, when when I say he doesn't shoot threes that doesn't mean oh he's like a 20% three point shooter he's not very good he's shooting 7.1% from three this season 7.1 <laughs> that's just not going to play in Joe Mazzulla's system right like he he is currently shooting let's see totals he's shooting 1 for 14 from three this season not very good and TJ McConnell's a good player it just i just don't think it makes sense for the Celtics and, and sen- especially considering the Pacers are declining trade calls i don't think a second in these players is enough to get it done anyways yeah i think the Pacers are trying to compete right so tj mcconnell has been a really really good rotation piece for them this year and the successful team that they have put together kind of quickly like they traded sabonis for halliburton what a season and a half ago that's a pretty quick turnaround to have a team that is competitive. The roster has been reshaped and is trending in the right direction. McConnell is a key part of that. Like he gives them really good minutes when Halliburton goes out of the game. Example would be the other day uh, when he helped turn the game on its head in Indiana. I think if you have a younger team, you need a vet like TJ McConnell, who's going to be scrappy and play hard and do everything he can to win while also leading by example. I think from a Celtic standpoint, I think it'd be cool to have somebody that's a little fiery like that. I think they do have guys like that on the team already. So it's not the most must get guy ever, but to Jack's point, Pritchard has been really, really good from three this year. He has been streaky, but he can be very good. And the Pacers game was an example that he was knocking down threes. Like it was nobody's business the other day. McConnell just wouldn't fit with the Celtics. He would get exposed. He would be a weak link offensively, and that's just not what you want, especially when you're trying to win a championship. So, unfortunately, it doesn't feel like that would be a realistic move for either side. But in terms of the proposal straight up, not bad. Yeah, the value is not terrible. a fake just... trade. If someone was like, this yeah. happened, I don't think I'd be like, wow, like that's crazy. Like, yeah. Oh, wow. Okay. The salary works, too. So, credit to you, Inferno. Shout out, Hunter. Uh, next Big team respect. that we got. Uh, clarification of the TJ McConnell thing. Wanted to give Pritchard his flowers for having a good game against the Pacers because I forgot to mention that. Still, I got you. Uh, I thought even with a very efficient night from Pritchard, McConnell was more impactful during a matchup against them last year. It's not great considering it should be a pretty good matchup for Pritchard to move freely with the trees. I also think TJ McConnell had a much larger role in that game because he had to than Pritchard did. So I think that's impactful as well. Uh, last email. Uh, from RJ, what's popping on further review? Even guys, it's not a rant about last night's loss to the Pacers, but how instant replay is deployed. I love the idea of seeing a play interview on close calls or obstructive view calls in every sport. My one request is that replays are at regular speed, not super slow mo. I saw John Corrales tweet about this last night. Um, if the only way to overturn the opinion of the ref is to go frame by frame like it was the zapper footage, it ain't conclusive. Call it a move on. That's my two cents. What's yours? Be well. I agree. I, I, I think John Corrales tweeted last night during the Raptors game. They called quickly for a flagrant, um, but it was only a flagrant because like they super slow mo it down. Like in real time, it was a basketball move. There was no malintent. There was no like bad intentions there. But when they slowed it down, they called a flagrant because he like elbowed him or something unintentionally. So like I, I, the slow mo stuff, I I do think is a problem at times. Imagine what it must be like to like have yourself be played in slow motion like on replays and stuff Hmm. that must be an insane experience just to watch everything you did happen in slow motion and have it picked apart i think this is a good point i think there is a lot of like splitting of hairs when it comes to replay reviews across all sports one of the reasons i don't like football actually i think it's very unclear what a catch is what isn't a catch i think it's annoying a lot of time anyway i think if the nba took a little bit less of a slow motion look at every single thing 
it would be a little bit beneficial. Mm. RJ makes a great point. Yeah, I agree. Um, I think that was the last email we had. So we can move on to the NBA section uh, and start with our Podly NBA standings check-in. Uh, see we, how every team around the league is doing. Let me pull up the standings here uh, so we can take a look. <clears throat> Let's see. Let me share a screen for y'all. NBA standings. Uh, Celtics still atop the East. Lost their last game, but still 8-2 and two in their last 10. Better than their top of the East counterparts. Bucks and Sixers both 5-5 five and five in their last 10 games. Uh, even the Knicks and the Heat only 6-4 and four in their last 10, which is good, uh, but it is on par for where they are in the standings. Uh, Pacers 7-3. and three. Cavs 7-3. and three. They're turning it around. Magic free-falling down the board. 5-5 uh, five and five in their last 10. Bulls picking up the pace. Two wins in a row. They'll both are against the Hornets, so keep that in mind. Knicks, uh, biggest win streak in the East at five. Cavs at three. Uh, Bulls at two. Everyone else at one or losses. Wizards and Pistons, five in a row on their way mm. to getting to that 10 mark where we care. Uh, and the Hornets, Wizards, and Pistons are still under 10 wins. Not good. <laughs> Not very Knicks good at all. haven't lost since the trade. Yes. And Raptors uh, are pretty good since the trade, too. And now they're three and two. But last night against the Lakers was a very close game. And RJ Barrett has been playing great. So credit to them. Good trade for both sides right now, it's looking like. <clears throat> Out West, a lot of wins at the top. One game win streaks for the top six teams in the West. Timberwolves, Thunder, Nuggets, Clippers, Kings. Uh, Nuggets, 8-2 and two in their last 10. They're getting hot. Shocker. They're the best team in the league. Jazz, 8-2 and two in their last 10 games. <laughs> Which is It is the nuts. most random like, <laughs> uh -huh. hot streak of all the teams. Because I, I did take a look at the standings earlier today. Just look at like the Bucks stuff and... Uh, you know, how, how they've been Minnesota, how they've been over their last couple games. Cause we had to talk about it and Utah being randomly eight and two is so bizarre. They still aren't in the playoffs yet, but they are one game kind of creeping into that picture. <laughs> one game out. Not Utah fans kind of have a little bit to look forward to. Like their team's fun. I think the well, jazz the, are officially fun. Maybe they're the one guy away from being fun. The best part is when we talked about the Celtics Jazz game, we were like, they got Celtics, Bucks, Sixers, Nuggets in a row. They got stomped by the Celtics, beat the Bucks and the Sixers. <laughs> Shout out the Jazz. Did exactly what the Celtics should want them to. Uh, meanwhile, Grizzlies have won three in a row, although the season ending injury to Ja. Terrible news. I don't even think we put that on the Hank sheet. Is on. Uh, I don't even think we put that on the sheet, which we probably we didn't. Should. I completely forgot about it. <laughs> ja is out for the season. Uh, we can talk about that now while we're in the standings, though. Ja's going to miss the end of the season. Uh, I don't know. Like, I still feel like they could be an okay team. Like, they're not out of the, the play-in yet. It, it's getting to the point where they maybe, like, look to ship off some, like, outside pieces and focus on young guys around their good players. But th this isn't a lose on purpose uh, yet. It's just a maybe we sell, get some assets, and if we lose, we lose. Sort of like the um, the Jazz last year, I would say. Treat it, treat it like that. You still have a chance, but I don't know. I think just tougher draw literally trying to lose on purpose they've won three in a row i think the jaw surgery being season ending is part of them trying to lose on purpose oh oh i don't think so i don't think so at all that'd be a waste they just they just spent two first round picks to compete heading into the season i don't think they'd lose on purpose now especially with this draft well they did that not knowing that steven adams was going to be hurt <clears throat> They knew about the jaw thing. I don't know when the official 25 games got announced. That could have been before the trade. I could be wrong. Um, as far as what they're doing going forward, it is certainly not going to be rooting for a play in spot. The front. Now I I'm not saying, I don't know how you could disagree with this. It's literally happening right in front of your face. He's getting season ending surgery. Sam, you act like every injury is all oh, the team wants to lose. That's not how injuries works. Injuries can just happen, you know, right? Like when he, he could just be his hurt. shoulder, was there do you remember it happening? Did you see it online? Was it a big deal? No, but you, we've seen stuff happen before, like behind the scenes. Like stuff can just happen. Injuries can just happen. You don't see everything. I think this was a is anything bothering you? Okay, yes. Get it fixed now. The season is chalked. And we're going to play it out with the team that was ass before you came back. I disagree. They were they're playing well. They had a chance to play, and I I just I just disagree with you. Especially considering there is zero chance this team will get a top four lottery odd spot. Zero. There is no chance. 
They are not going to out tank the Hornets, Wizards, Pistons, or Spurs this season, no matter who was on the court for them. I'm sorry. So I just Dang don't isn't think always about tank. the first pick. Like you just do, like if you if you waste not waste, waste is the wrong word. The seventh pick is still not bad to the Memphis Grizzlies. Sure, it's okay. I just don't think they're going to intentionally try to lose. I don't think they shut Jod down in an attempt to lose the season. I just don't like I just don't believe that. We disagree. I just I just teams don't do that like that that unless you are teams down at the bottom do bottom that. unless you're at the bottom bottom looking to like go for a top four pick like this team just spent to try to compete I don't think they're not shutting down their star as they were just getting rolling they're six and four in the last 10 games like they, they, they were they certainly up. did spend to compete there is no doubt about it but they and they were rolling when John was back stuff I they were rolling no I don't believe it I, what I just, what I, was their I record when he that. came back do you know I can tell you in a second. Uh, what's their record now? Because if it's like less than 35 total games, let's see. They have played 37 total games. So six they were six four. and three with Ja. Okay. So it's not bad. I don't know. Is six and is six and three like good enough as a pace to overtake the rest of the teams in front of them? I'm not saying for sure, but I'm saying they spent to compete. They were playing well with Jod. They're not just going to randomly shut him down after playing well with him. Like, I, I just don't like it, it. I can I can see a point where from a health perspective, they were like, we could let you play through this. The season is already missed. We're not going to risk the injury, but they didn't do it so they could tank. Maybe they did it like if they were top three in the West, maybe it would have been like a four week injury or a two month injury and back for the playoffs. That's what I was about to say. Sure. And so I could believe that, but I don't think they did it so they could tank. I just don't think that's where the Grizzlies were this season. This is a tank influence decision. I don't, I no, I don't, I disagree with that. I think it's a health long-term influence decision, not a tanking influence decision. I think that's, that has something to do with it too, but they're like, listen, I just don't, you could come back, but let's make sure it's absolutely perfect. We're not perfect. The best it can be healed. We're not going to rush you back. This season is far gone now. We're almost halfway through. There's no sense in you missing four to six weeks coming back. And we're still at 12th in the West now trying to climb sure. out of a bigger hole. Yes, I agree. I think it could be an injury, long-term health and flu decision. But I don't think decision was, you know, we're bad anyways. We'll just shut you down and get a pick. I don't think that had anything to do with it. I do. Okay. I think it was both. That's fine. We can disagree. Um, yeah, rest of the West, Rockets, Suns, mid, Lakers, still bad, four and six, though they've won two in a row, so they've better than two and eight that they were before. Uh, and then, yeah, the Spurs, five games they've won. That is, that's pretty tragic. Anyways, next thing we got, Raptors coach, Darko Ryakovich, uh, got very angry last night after the Raptors-Lakers game. Uh, should we play the video? Should I pull up the video? Let's see. Send a video. Darko was mad at the refs after the game. Uh, basically you know how said long he went for he went for a long time talking. It was it's the video going around is a minute and seventeen seconds of just pure rage. Um, the best quote from the bunch, just so we don't have to necessarily listen and watch the whole thing through and through, was. Did they have to win tonight? Because if that was the case, just let us know and we won't show up for the game. Just give them to win. That was not fair tonight. Talked about how Scotty Barnes doesn't get enough calls. Uh, let's let's take a listen at what Dark has to say. Players in our team as well. How's possible is Scotty Barnes, who is all-star caliber player in this league, he goes every single time to the rim with force and trying to get, get uh, to, to the rim without flopping and, and not trying to get foul calls. He gets two uh, free throws for the whole game. How's that possible? How are you going to explain it that, that, that to me? They had to win tonight? If that's, if that's the case, just let us know so we don't show up for the game. Just give them a win. But that, that was not fair tonight. And this is not happening first time for us. Scotty Barnes is going to be all-star. He's going to be the face of this league. And what, what's happening over here during whole season, I've been holding it back. It's a complete crap. Coach, do you feel like you're getting any explanations at all? That mic had me shook. Did you see, like, get any explanations? No, no, there is no explanation. They just, they just come up there, they review what, and they see what they want to see. They don't want to hear us what we got to say. They don't want to hear the players. They, 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 they don't just want to protect us. Over again, they got 36 free throws, 23 free throws in, in the fourth quarter. What are we talking about? What are we talking about? How are we going to supposed to play? 
He got so mad. Uh, he looks like um, in. Oh, let me find the moment. In this moment right here, where he's staring at the camera, he looks like. Have you seen the viral video of the guy in the bagel shop getting mad because people called him? A shrimp? I love that video. He looks like he, bagel shrimp. He, he does. <laughs> it looks like. Look. It, tell me he doesn't. Everywhere look. I go, it's that same fucking smirk. Tell me he With doesn't. With the fighting look like lip. This guy. Look at that. Ready? <laughs> Bang. <laughs> it's the same person. <laughs> This is oh, funny to he you? Looks like, uh, this is funny? He looks like you're going to get mad at me for not knowing the actor. He looks like uh, he sh- should be in I Think You Can Leave, just briefly. Tim uh, Robinson? Yeah, just for like this frame right here. He looks like, maybe not the exact like looks like him, but this is a face Tim Robinson would make. <laughs> I think so. Yeah, like I could see like <laughs> a sure. Tim Robinson play off of this for sure. Uh, that uh, was awesome though. Shout out Darko. So that was electric. Context to the free throw stuff. In yeah. The, I, Never wanted to side with the Lakers. Still mm-hmm. not. But apparently, eight of those free throws came from intentional fouls. <laughs> so, <Sure. laughs> like, I mean, even with that, what was it? Did you say 23 to 2? So that's 15 to 2 in the fourth quarter. Like, that's still quite a difference. Mm. Yeah. But if you're following at the end of the game, like, you can't be like, hey, they shot this many free throws. Well, whose fault is that? Well, how many were intentional? You said eight. The end score was thirty-six to thirteen. So for the whole game, it was no, is, no. I'm saying like crazy. there's still a big difference yeah. throughout like the fourth quarter, even without the intentional, and throughout the whole game. Like he has a gripe, but mm-hmm. I I did see the context to it, so I wanted to put it out there in fairness. I will say one: I- we don't need somebody in the comments being like, "You guys don't even pay attention." this yeah. is why they had this many like no i did i did watch this game i will say though and uh th- there was one foul call that got me angry and so i wonder was it if the this illegal was... screen where davis <laughs> acted like he died yeah that was that was horrendous i watched that real time that was terrible um but yeah all right what happened Next... to the game i used to love also lebron said that uh the lakers just didn't foul all right buddy. he was asked about it. he said well it looks like they fouled us a lot and we didn't foul but if LeBron is on the I will say, end of like bad officiating in his opinion, then it looks like true. the whole league needs to change. I will say that is the perfect answer when you were asked about that. Well, shouldn't have fouled <laughs> LeBron or not. Like that is a hilariously perfect answer to that question. No comment. Uh, Cause you know, I'm right. Uh, next thing we got Grant Williams, uh, not doing too hot supposedly in Dallas right now. Um, this is from, uh, Kevin Gray Jr. Of, do you know who he writes for? Or One he... of the local radio stations. He hosts okay. the pre and post game. Local radio guy in Dallas. Uh, 97 won the freak. Uh, I just looked it up. Says on the subject of Grant Williams, one Mav source I talked to recently about him said the concern is that Williams has never been asked to play this many minutes and be in shape to do so. That has caused some regression from his early start, averaging 8.4 points, 3.6 rebounds, 1.4 assists on 41.8, 37.9 splits this year. His number have regressed in each new month uh, down to uh, 12, 9, 8. Four in January so far through just a few games, uh, and he's shooting just fourteen percent from three through the first few games of January. Listen, shooting splits will vary. Um, I admittedly haven't watched a ton of Mavericks games this year. Uh, this doesn't look great. It looks like a bad slump. It looks like he's regressing. Um, so that's tough literally for Grant. every month is like ever <laughs> yeah. so slightly gotten worse. Because I went, what I did is I was like, let me see what Grant's averaging for the year, and I looked, and I was like, well, like this isn't that bad. Like he's shooting a lot of threes, like 38% from three isn't bad at all. Then I was like, well, they're saying this for reasons. So let's look at the splits. And I look and I'm like, Oh my God, like down from 48, 45 to 37, 14. And then like, he's just ever so slightly gotten worse every month. Mm. It's kind of nuts. I don't know if I would consider Grant Williams to be out of shape, but I have not watched him play in Dallas. Yeah, I don't know how many minutes they're asking him to play. I suppose I could have wrote it down when I looked it all up. But he still had like a good amount of run in Boston. Yeah, he, he did still play played plenty of minutes. Like he should be able to handle playing. I don't know what the problem is. It sucks to see. I like Grant. I think it's funny when he performs badly. But besides that, I'm not actively rooting against him. I don't blame him for wanting to go play somewhere where he might get more of an opportunity. He played 26 minutes last year. He's playing 27 this year. So. It's a lot. Yeah, it's a big difference. It is a lot. <clears throat> he um, played just seven minutes uh, in the last game. 
that's tough. I don't know. I, I would need to watch the games to get the gauge. Um, shooting varies a lot in the NBA. Like a lot, like shooters will shoot forty percent one year, then thirty five the next year. Like it, it, it is a very like for for a lot of players, it is a varying thing. I need to look at the defense to get a full gauge, but it doesn't sound like uh, some Mavericks people are too pleased with him at the moment, which is it's tough. kind of funny. Like <clears throat> it went from. Oh my God, the Mavericks, and I said this, had a great off season too. This guy sucks. <laughs> well, yeah, tough look. That is the Grant experience, though. People here will be, they'll probably be in the comments like, we try to tell you Grant sucked. He doesn't suck. I stand on it. Uh, next thing we got more trade rumors from Michael Scotto of Hoop Site. Pascal Siakam linked to the Kings, still, kind of, uh, after all the stuff. The Kings have been active in trade talks, and the biggest name that's come up recently is Siakam. It seemed hot for a second there and the, uh, that maybe they were going to get him, then talks pulled back. From my standpoint, I heard that Sacramento talks for Siakam primarily centered around Harrison Barnes, Kevin Herter, Davion Mitchell, and the first-round pick uh, or so of potential draft pick um, of first-round variety for Siakam in those talks. I will say, I did also see a report, I forget where it came from, that I think it was Michael Grange, who's a Toronto guy, uh, that it came out that Siakam talks broke down to Sacramento because he told them he's not re-signing there. And so Sacramento was like, all right, <laughs> never mind. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, anyways. Yeah, he had a, a local Kings beat writer on the Hoopside pod, and they mm. talked greatly about different Kings trade possibilities. The local guy, <clears throat> I forget his name, his last name was Ham said that Sacramento had long been interested in both Ananobi and Pascal Siakam. And after the Ananobi trade, it was kind of clear what the Raptors were going to want. And I think that's where things kind of stalled out, where we know Ujiri is a man that will not move off. He stands on business. And the Kings might not want to pay up, which is fair. I mean, especially all the stuff we've heard this season that Siakam isn't going to resign anywhere. If he gets traded, he wants to stay in Toronto. I don't know if I want to give up all that for him unless you truly think Harrison Barnes is a bad contract and you don't believe in Herter anymore. I mean, they clearly don't care for Mitchell that much. He's not playing and you want to give up picks. Like, I don't know if I want to do that. I I'd feel very conflicted if I was Sacramento. It's tough because it does feel like Siakam would be a good fit uh, on both ends. Um, so we'll see what happens. I don't know. It's interesting. They're also in on Levine, which weirdly enough, I think could be a better fit. Ironically enough, which is like we've very, talked about Levine few times. to the Kings, and I don't hate that of all the moves. <clears throat> yeah, but anyways, uh, next thing I we got is Steve Kerr <laughs> basically told Draymond to stop talking to the refs. Uh, now, Sam, you didn't actually give me any context for this to read. You just put a meme, which I'm not going to read on the show. So I'm going to ask you to explain this to me because I, I don't know what happened. Yeah, so he was in a press conference. Uh, who they play yesterday? They played. And obviously the news has come out that Draymond is coming back. He's no longer suspended, served the 12 game suspension after assaulting everybody. And they said, that's enough of that. And they asked Kerr how the team would handle putting him back in there, what they expect out of him, how they think they want him to change. And him saying they are going to ask him to leave the officials alone is one of the funniest things I have ever heard. Draymond Green, who is notorious for being one of the biggest complainers in the league, second to LeBron probably, he gets away with murder in terms of not being called for technical fouls when he chases refs down, gives them a piece of his mind, screams at them, whatever. That is like his number one signature move, and you're going to – well, maybe number two. Uh, but you're going to ask him not to do that? Good luck. Yeah, it th that doesn't seem uh, <laughs> that doesn't seem very likely. <laughs> that is pretty uh, much the point. But... I thought it was funny, a little quick hit in the NBA section, but <laughs> I just I would love to see how long this lasts. Like, there should be prop bets on the Draymond return. There should be the who get who's the next victim, and there should be how many games before he berates an official after being told not to. Yeah, tough. Too weird. <clears throat> Very weird. Next, we got the Heat have extended uh, Eric Spolstra on an eight-year, one hundred and twenty million dollar contract. Now, at first glance, the first reaction out of pure comedy is, "Did you not learn from Monty Williams?" Although this is very clearly different. That was just the funniest this thing. This is I earned, remember. baby. Very different. Very earned. Uh, eight more years of Eric Spolstra in Miami. 
um, hundred twenty million dollars. What does that break down per season? Uh, that is fifteen mil a season. So for context, Eric Spolstra is making as much money as. Let's take a look. Who's making fifteen mil? He is making person. as much as. Let's see, Jonas Valanciunas and Karis LeVert. Oh, you're looking at NBA players. Yeah, what you what you think I was looking at? Other oh, coaches. Oh, coaches. Oh, coaches. I think it's Shimani. <laughs> it's just tough, but good good for Eric Spolstra. Uh, unironically, good good deal for him. He's a great coach, obviously. So deserved. I didn't realize like how lucrative the extension was yesterday, but I kept getting notifications about this news, and I was like, okay, like, cool. Like, why 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 do I keep seeing Woj tweet about this? Like, the news mm-hmm. is broken, buddy. But no, the fact that it's this much money is kind of crazy. Earned, but still crazy. <clears throat> a lot of money for a coach. But again, like we both said, good for Eric Spolstra. Deserves it. Um, all right. Last, I believe, last NBA yes. thing we got uh, is the race for some of these awards and the new restrictions on how many games you have to play to be eligible, which is 65 games, starting to come into play. Uh, so some guys who could be up for awards, all NBA, uh, MVP, etc. John Morant. Bradley Beal already can't win, already missed too many games. Doesn't matter for John now. Anyways, uh, Kyrie Irving has already missed 16 games. Can only miss what? 17. Uh, you can only miss 17, so he can only miss one more. Uh, Jimmy Butler has missed 10 games, and Bede's missed eight games. Jamal Murray has missed 14, which, as Sam put on here, matters for his contract, which kind of sucks. Bam has missed 10. Chris Tops has missed 9. KD, 7. Devin Booker, 8. This could have real impact on the all NBA teams, especially because you could see some guys getting in there who probably deserve it as well because there's a lot of talent in the league, anyways, but might not have gotten mm-hmm. on had some of these players played all their games. The Embiid one is certainly the most intriguing one to watch out for. Yeah, I got a kick out of that. And that's what inspired me to kind of look into this and be like, okay, like who's close? Because Embiid is getting serious buzz to win another MVP. Mm-hmm. He can only miss nine more games this season. We are not even halfway through. He has missed eight. That's that's uh, on pace to you know miss more than seventeen. Yeah, I would be kind of uh, tickled for a laugh <laughs> if he did not win it <laughs> because of this. Uh, Jimmy Butler missing ten isn't shocking. The Jamal Murray one is tough though. The reason why this is important is for multiple reasons. One. The man has never made an All Star team, which is not impacted by how many games he plays per se, but it will affect the voting. This was not a he missed time on purpose thing. He hurt his ankle. Two, he is due for a contract extension this summer. The Denver Nuggets can only offer him uh, a Supermax like the Celtics could with Jalen last year if he makes All-NBA. If you remember, it was a huge deal whether or not Jalen would actually get selected to the team so the deal could get done. Right now, doesn't look like he's going to be able to be eligible for that because of this new rule. Puts the Nuggets in a little bit of a bind, but also somewhat helps them depending on what his feelings on staying are. Because if he doesn't qualify, they can pay him less. And then if he still wants to stay, it doesn't matter. Um, but that would suck for them if this led to him leaving. Kristaps, um, the only Celtic on this list, though, which is pretty good. Mm-hmm. Yeah. A lot of Celtics playing a lot of games. It, it makes sense. They, they have guys who like to play the games anyway. So. Doesn't it feel like they've uh, had guys really miss more time, though? Uh, I don't think so. I, I think it's been very sporadic. I think maybe there's, like, th- there hasn't been a lot of guys out at the same time. Like, it's, it's you know, maybe Jalen Brown one night, and then a couple nights later, maybe, maybe Drew wins the game. But um, I don't know. I think they've been pretty good at, at managing it this year uh, overall. But All right. Uh, let's do the rat list. Would you like to kick us off? Um, yes, I would. Rat list. The people trying to drive through the flooding. They're back. <laughs> so if you don't know, those of us here in southern New England just had a uh, big time rainstorm, a lot of wind overnight. It was treacherous outside on the roads. Uh, buddy of mine was telling us how he's an officer. So he was assigned to direct traffic near this major flooding site, like three feet of water. People were just driving past this man. And then he was turning and watching him get stuck in the water. That might be my dream like day at work. 
is to tell people the correct thing to do, watch them not listen to me, and then get themselves into a pickle. You have to be a real moron to see anything like that and then just be like, yeah, let me try. Mm. <laughs> Uh, yeah, that's, that's a tough look for the people that were ignoring the, uh, <laughs> the guy. Um, I haven't done much the last couple of days. I, my brat list is going to be pretty lame, pretty boring. Cause I just, I mean, we've recorded two days ago when we did rat list yesterday. All I did all day was sit in my house and write for hours. <laughs> so I don't really have much to rat list. Uh, I guess I will rat list, uh, I'll rat list Chick-fil-A, I suppose. Oh, no. Um, so I've gotten Chick Fil A twice in the last couple of days. It's very good. Like to be clear, like I love Chick Fil A. It's very good quality. Um, I get the deluxe, so I get like the tomato, lettuce, all this stuff on it. It's good. They listen when you get a burger, you expect what's the let me. What do you think the standard is? Right, you you know how big Chick Fil A sandwiches are. You think a couple pieces of lettuce, maybe like three pickles, one tomato. I like lettuce, tomato pickles i get that for a reason i got like three tomatoes and nine pickles on one thing like and it was like i just I'm pulled it off it wasn't the end of the world i love pickles right i don't need nine of them i like i that's it's not a you, chicken you sandwich pickle anymore. me up i wouldn't get mad it's a pickle stuff, sandwich at that point here's the problem when the sandwich becomes difficult to hold together yes that that's is, when that i would raise an issue <laughs> that the was tomato the slices will do that to you I, that that was in fact the problem. I was trying to hold it together, just like crumbling out in front of me. I had to like open the sandwich, like do a fucking surgery, pull a tomato out, take a couple pickles off. I did eat the pickles separately, so like I am a pickle guy. I will say it was just like too much on the sandwich to hold up. Um, it was just like I was disappointed by the the, the structural integrity of the Chick Fil A sandwich. So <laughs> rat list. I don't really know what the particular we'll say rat list the capabilities of my family's truck so i've been using the family sure. truck because my car is out of service as as of right now so i still have to go to work and stuff so anyways at my job parking is not very good not very good at all there are stacked spaces in the parking lot so typically i do not like to park in the parking lot because i don't want to be like oh i have to go move my car so somebody can go just don't want to do that it's a hassle i don't want to deal with it now, instead of parking in a lot, sometimes I'll parallel park on the street. The street, snow plowed against the sides. Less space for parallel parking, so I did not do that. The other option is to parallel park on a side street that goes around our building. This side street is on a hill. So I decide I'm going to take a spot, I'm going to drive into it, and I'll be fine. I get in the spot, and I'm like, oh, wait. Instead of having to worry about like pulling around around this car, I'm just going to pull all the way through and then park on the other side of all these cars. So I can just drive away without having to like back out and worry about getting boxed in or whatever. So I go to put the car in reverse. And I, I saw my life flash before my eyes. I thought I was going to go slamming nose to nose with this car that was parked in front of me. And I thought I was going to have to like, you know, figure out whose car it was all that. And I was petrified because I stopped my car and parked it. And I had no way of like, am I going to be able to move this later? Cause I'm going to go get lunch. Luckily I got my car to get lunch. It did not fall forward when I went to take it out of park and I got away harmlessly, but I was shook like for half my day yesterday. I was like, is my Jersey Mike's going to come with a cost today? Yeah, that's, that's big time that's uh great that you got away uh without <laughs> hitting another car that would have been a disaster. it has been like a bad like week for me driving <laughs> like i was i don't remember what i was doing i wasn't like texting or anything but i was i think i was like looking at the windshield wipers or something how they worked like i almost yeah. like just drove into somebody parked it was bad <laughs> jesus yeah it doesn't sound good that's probably not exactly i swear i'm not i'm not do. a bad driver <laughs> You wouldn't know. Oh, and then the and show. then having to drive in the snow was awful the other day. That was like terrifying. That'll do it. You couldn't see and you couldn't move. Ass. That'll do it. Uh, I'll rattle us the rain. Uh, so my room gets like hot at night if I don't open the window. But if I open the window, rain just 
comes in my window. <laughs> and so I, I was like two 30 last night. I woke up. Um, and I, I don't like a rat was myself too. Cause this was like stupid. I was just tired. And like, you know, you just like, I thought I was super smart. I put like, I took one thing, a paper towel. I folded it in half a couple times and I just put it. Cause I have like shutters in my window, but they don't come all the way. So there's like, a little gap. I just put it in like the little gap to like yeah. soak up the rain. So it wouldn't drip. It. Yeah. But like, I'll show you what it is now. This is the most pathetic excuse for like trying to help that you could like, this is useless. This did nothing. Like what, what was I thinking last night? And maybe it helped. Cause it is, it is in fact soaked and it's dripping everywhere. So this is stupid of me to do it. You had the drip, but like, so I, I guess it worked in the sense that all of this water didn't go all over my room, but like, this is just the most measly useless piece of like <laughs> paper towel you've ever seen in your life. So that was pretty, uh, pretty smart by me if you ask me speaking of the storm ratless to the storm as well so we have a grill on our porch that grill got tossed around baby cracked through the railing it did not fall off the porch but it did crack the railing so i came home this morning from the gym because when i left i went through the basement so i didn't see it but i was like oh this isn't how this is supposed to look and yeah, now now like part of the railing is cracked and needs to be fixed. So that kind of sucks. But it's, it's crazy tough. to see how the whole like porch fur deck furniture got like moved around. Absolutely bullied by the wind. Yeah. My that's house brutal. shakes when it when it's really windy. I hate that. <laughs> that sounds terrible. Uh it's I'm gonna not my... too bad, but it's just ever so slightly like, like it's making its presence known. Mm. I'm going to ratless myself, too, because I just ratless a Chick-fil-A, and I'm probably just going to go get Chick-fil-A now because it's it's still good. I, like, I, I still want it. I'm so hungry. Chick-fil-A sounds great again. I will say I tried the Polynesian sauce for the first time yesterday. It's very good. good. Big fan. I was I, in the past. I've been a, a solely Chick-fil-A sauce guy, but Polynesian is uh very good. Big fan. That's all I got though. I don't have much. Like I said, I didn't do much yesterday. I, I all I did yesterday, I wrote articles, and then at night I played Fortnite with my friends. Uh, and I will say, a lot of sweats in Fortnite. Routless people who don't touch grass. You got like, to play for, You got to play video games. You're back. I did. I was very excited. Uh, the boys were on. Played some Fortnite. Got a win. Didn't leave without a dub. So huge. Uh, but yeah, shout out. Uh, Ratless the people I, in Fortnite who sweat fucked up i think i'm out i don't think i have a closer today i feel bad it happens we didn't do i mean it's easier on the like saturday recordings because we had multiple like days in between yeah. like we just didn't have much to do like it's only been a day you'll get something uh going to the game today <clears throat> yeah we talked to y'all enough times <laughs> you guys don't need more from us anyways we can uh, we can call it there. Thank y'all for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to How About Them Celtics. We appreciate y'all very much for tuning in. Leave us a review on Apple, please. Uh, <laughs> make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, follow us on Spotify, all that good stuff, and I'll let Sam take it out. Hey, thank you very much for watching. Make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss out on any of our daily uploads. These pods are coming at you Tuesday, Thursday, Sunday. You also have game recaps after any game that isn't the day before a pod day. You have Talking Seas with Bobby Kravitsky. One of those came out yesterday. You have game recaps, like I mentioned, film breakdowns and rumor breakdowns and the pregame shows. Half hour before every sh every game, we're here live doing a stream. So make sure you come hang out. Spotify and Apple have our audio versions of the pods and game recaps, so you don't want to miss those either. Follow us. Leave a five-star review like Jack asked. You can reach out to us, hbtcpod at gmail.com if you would like to be featured as part of the email segment. We love going through the emails. We had a great one from Ian Saad say it was a banger of an email going through the Patriots fan thoughts. You can reach out and follow us. How about them C's? Twitter, Instagram, TikTok. The Facebook is just the name of the podcast. So our pregame streams are there as well as YouTube and Twitter. So follow us, like us, whatever it lets you do. You can follow Jack at Jack's Money B. You can follow me at Sam LaFrance NBA. It's up for us. Bye.